Welcome back to Ed's Trains. Uh, this video is a short uh, how-to uh, showing how I implemented the uh, Block Power Controller 2 in the Legacy Command System on my layout. Uh, this video is being prepared at the request of Nick of Nick L Trains, uh, who in his last uh, track update had talked about how he implemented uh, controlling the blocks on his layout and in the comment on his layout I mentioned that I uh, have blocks that I control uh, through my cab 2 using the block power controller 2. He asked if I would do a short video on how I do that in my layout and that's what this video will cover. Uh, this is the manual. Um, highly encourage you to read it if you decide to use the BPC2. Um, I know being guys we tend to just jump in and not read the manual. I strongly urge you to read the manual. If you don't read the entire manual, <laughs> there are four pages that can probably get you through the whole thing. Uh, pages 12 through uh, 15. 12 uh, kind of explains the setup on the on modules and how you can connect them serially. In this case, it's the uh, PDI cable connected serially. And uh, page 13 uh, gives you a, an overview of what all of the different uh, features are of the block power controller itself. Pages 14 and 15 are helpful because they further explain that not only can you serial, serially connect the modules using the PDI cable, you can also uh, connect the power that drives each one of these modules. You know, it's a separate accessory uh, and it needs its own power to function and that's separate from the block power controller uh, power inputs and, and outputs to accessories or tracks. So you, in this example you've got an auxiliary power uh, source like I have my ZW post-war. It connects to the uh, power input and then you can serially power your modules in that fashion. Page 15 uh, shows you how you go through um, programming the um, block power controller. Uh, in a final analysis, the final decision that you make is whether you want the settings of the block power controller uh, at the end of your session when you turn the layout on to, to uh, also be on when you turn the layout on again at a later time. So for instance if you have a track siding block power on when you shut the layout off you can program the block power controller to have that block on uh, the next time you power up your layout. Or the default is um, everything that was on when you turn your layout off, turn the power off, uh, is off when you turn the power back on. And then what I wanted to show you was uh, the diagram I prepared uh, to kind of figure out where I wanted to have my blocks and uh, as you can see, um, I have two continuous loops and then a reverse loop. Uh, what I decided to do was to isolate all of the uh, uh, sidings. And it's shown by these double red lines. So this, is is this siding is isolated, that one is isolated, that one is, and these two, and number 10 sitting over here uh, is also isolated. Now, what I didn't do, and I still may go back and decide to do that, is I did not isolate my reverse loop. And what that means is whatever I have on that loop, uh, as soon as I power up the layout, it's powered on and I can't control the power. So I can't store engines or other things on that track. Uh, without having them powered up or have power to them and I, I'm considering uh, adding that as another block but right now I have essentially six blocks five six seven eight nine and ten before I show you how I wired up the block power controller uh, I thought I would first do a short demonstration about uh, the utility of the block power controller too um, I power my layout with a ZWL and a ZW. The ZWL in command mode 
so I can control the voltage with my cab 2. Uh, track 1 is the interior loop, track 4 is the exterior loop which corresponds to the two handles and 2 and 3 are the accessories. My ZW post-war uh, does other things but also powers the uh, uh, legacy control system module. So uh, here for instance is track 1 which is the uh, ZWL, so now the track 1 has power, uh, track 4 has power, and um, track 3, a bunch of accessories, uh, and 2, which is lighting and accessories. So that, that's how I uh, use the cab 2, uh, designating those uh, outputs as a track. Now I'll use the cab 2 to uh, turn on uh, 3 blocks. First block is block 5, which is, uh, you'll see the little light come on, you press X, uh, aux 1 to turn it on, and aux 2 to turn your block off. And it turned off. So now I'll turn three of them on. Block 5 again is on. Block uh, 6, which is at the loading dock of the factory there. and 7, which is to the right of the factory. So, zoom in on these puppies. There you go. Now I'll turn them off. Uh, track 5, aux 2. And as you can see, it's off. Now I'll do track 6, aux 2. And then track 7, aux 2. Now here's my sort of control center, my power, uh, the ZWL, the command base, uh, TUI, uh, the post-war ZW, and then the uh, LCS modules. Uh, the first one is my Wi-Fi unit, then I have a serial unit, uh, an accessory unit, another accessories, ASC2, and then the far one is the block power controller. Uh, I'm going to have to remove the camera and take the video of the block power controller holding it by hand so it's going to be a little jerky because I only have about 18 inches of space there and I can't get the camera in uh, in any uh, simple way. But here, let me uh, first uh, focus on uh, wiring. Uh, what you see here is um, the serial 2, and this is the PDI cable. It's coming from the first module. Then the PDI cable next to it is is connected to the next module, and so on and so forth. Okay, here's the uh, block power controller. This PDI cable comes from the previous uh, module, and this uh, PDI cable heads out and connects to the first uh, sensor track uh, on my layout. Now, this is the power block from the um, ZW that provides 14 volts to run the block power controller. And that goes back here to the second ASC2 and the power comes in from the previous ASC2 and then exits uh, from the ASC2 and connects over here to the block power controller. Now, the block power controller, as you can see, has um, two uh, terminals that are labeled, labeled COM, one here and one here, and then there are four separate uh, circuits that are associated with each COM. So the COM accepts a voltage, any voltage you want, and then for instance in COM1 you, uh, in my case, it's 18 volts coming in connected to the COM, and then the block power controller, which is simply a switch, uh, turns on one, two, three, or four, depending on you know the command, and then 
by doing that it transfers the 14 volts through that circuit to wherever it's connected to. Uh, same thing with COM2. Now the interesting thing about the block power controller is the COM1 can be one voltage, COM2 can be a separate voltage. So you could, for instance, in COM1 have 18 volts coming in to run your trains. COM2 could be, say, I don't know, 12 volts to run um, accessories. The only thing to remember is that voltage is the is a constant voltage coming into this COM or whatever it is you set it for. But the only voltage that'll go out through these four switches is whatever's coming into the COM. So that's it. It's really kind of that simple. Okay. Now this line here, this wire, uh, is one of the power lines that comes out of the black power controller and it goes up through the bottom of the layout and then connects to uh, the track right about here and so the power is isolated from about this point on to the end of the siding. Now the reason that I do that is so uh, I don't inadvertently provide power to this siding when I have track 4 on uh, and have a train run into that siding and before I can turn it off or stop it it goes kaplooey. So I've decided that uh, I'll power this through uh, loop 1. Okay, now that I've shown you how uh, it's wired up, well, uh, once again I'll demonstrate the implementation. Uh, you can see that my inside loop, track 1 has power, track 4 has power uh, from the lamps on the switches, uh, but this siding does not have power. Uh, you can tell also that track 4 has power because the cab forward is lit. You see the headlight, etc. So what I'm going to do now, uh, as I mentioned, the siding is track 10. So I've got track 10 and I'll push aux 1. And as you can see, it's lit. And also I can now fire up the, sh the shade. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, that's the end of my video. Um, I didn't show you how to program the black power controller, because if you decide to do it, you really should read the manual. And also, there are other uh, YouTube videos that are excellent in explaining um, how to program the black power controller. Uh, I hope you find this uh, a bit useful. Thank you.